Hi everyone, Nathan here again with another True Tech troubleshooting tutorial. Today's video is a demo of the new version of Adobe Lifecycle Designer. In all my other videos up till now, I've used Lifecycle Designer ES2. Recently, I upgraded to ES3, and so today's video, I just want to go through some of the changes, some of the differences, and why I feel that it's a better product all around. So we're using Lifecycle Designer ES3 version 10.0.2. So I have on the screen a little form I made just to demonstrate some of the new features. And one of the big improvements is in how the text object works. Now we're not talking about the text field, which is this object. We're talking about the text object that mainly is just there to display text, not to receive input from the end user. And in the past, there was a lot of a difficulty if you were putting in rich text um, getting things formatted right and using designer to lay out text appropriately. There's been added support in this version for bullet lists and number lists like so. If you're typing and you want to add those kind of things you can now do that seamlessly instead of having to do tabbing and keeping track of the numbering or if you have a mind to cutting and pasting a numbered list from say Word into lifecycle it works very well and so these uh, numbered lists and indent promotion and demotion tags are there along with everything else that used to be there that's one of the nice new features also in the past uh, with subforms you had the choice of using a flowed subform or western text and now they're giving you a third option. So if we highlight a subform like this sample subform here, in the past we could change it between position and flow. That's that's the same, but now there's three options here. Used to be under flowed, you'd have top to bottom western text, and now you have the option of right to left. Uh, because Adobe is trying to support uh, many of the eastern languages such as Hebrew or Arabic that read right to left. And so in the past, you could always use locale, such as, such as in this text field, you could use locale to make the text read right to left, but you couldn't make the layout of the subform mimic that as well. You had to do that manually. And so now, by simply clicking this drop down, you can make things. Uh, orient themselves inside a flowed subform right to left or western text. So that's a nice new feature. Also what's new is there's now a new object called the flash field and this is just uh, the ability to add flash videos to your dynamic static PDFs. Overall I've seen in the last month or so using the software that it's less prone to crashes especially if you're doing a lot of cutting and pasting from one document to another. In the past, in the older versions, if you did too much cut cutting and pasting, especially messing around in the XML source, um, lifecycle became very unstable and you would uh, many times get crashes in the middle of, of working and lose part of your work unless you'd saved very often. So I, that does not happen as much anymore and I'm, I'm really happy about that. One big feature that is promoted on the Adobe Community Help screen when it talks about what's new is the ability to add style sheets to your forms. And of course, if you're familiar with web programming, you know CSS or style sheets is a way to take fonts and layout as defaults and set them for the entire page in your website. Well, you can do the same concept here in Lifecycle using Lifecycle style sheets. And so in order to add that to your toolbar. If you just click Tools, Customize, and then Add Styles, then that brings up this these handles, and you can add style sheets by coming to this palette and naming a style sheet, choosing what objects it's going to apply to. Let's say we want all of our text fields underlined, and we want uh, all their borders to be solid with a big thick line on them and we want all our caption formatting 
to be Times New Roman 12 and we want our value to be papyrus 8. Of course this is not very likely to use this but if we apply that style sheet now when we go back to our object library drag a text field onto our form and then apply our style or set as default then each time we add a text field it will have of course that's times new roman and if we put some text in the value field that's papyrus it's underlined and it has a border we preview it we can see that so style sheets would help save time and apply things uniformly without having to do a find replace in XML or click each object one by one to try to replace styles after you've forgotten after you've already laid out your form correctly a lot of times uh, in the past when I've had to do that after the form has been designed it really takes a lot of time to find all the different fonts and all the different styles um, one by one and make sure they're right. Very time consuming, and very sometimes a needle in a haystack type assignment. One more thing is in the past when especially if you've watched my videos and applied some of my techniques you've used nested subforms and such as we have a subform inside of a page page just being a a subform that's got some some preferences associated with it but sometimes when you're nesting subforms the handles that outline the subforms run together like right here this the edge of this handle on the left runs consecutively with the edge of this left side and it was hard to sometimes select only the subform you wanted especially if they're very similar in size and so now on the right side you see here a little subform handle object that allows you to easily switch between the two without having to go to the hierarchy just a simple little customization. Now finally, uh, just so you don't think I'm a lifecycle fanboy, there are some cons to the new version. First and foremost, you must buy it separately. ES2, lifecycle ES, came packaged before when you bought Adobe, uh, Adobe Acrobat 9 Professional and Adobe, Adobe Acrobat X Professional. Now in Adobe Acrobat 11 there is no lifecycle so ES3 must be purchased separately con number two if you purchase it separately you're going to pay retail $299 so a product that used to come with Acrobat as an add-on virtually free is now $300 and so those of you who have been designing forms for a long time probably will be more reluctant to upgrade because of this fact uh, also related to this, if you install Acrobat Pro 11 and you have Acrobat Pro X on your machine, your Lifecycle ES2 will be uninstalled as a part of the installation progress. So don't be caught off guard. If you're going, if you're a Lifecycle user and you're using an Acrobat X and you're upgrading to X, XI Pro or 11 Pro it will uninstall the entire Adobe Acrobat X Pro which includes Lifecycle so that's one of the one of the drawbacks of removing it from this version also uh, you can no longer use Acrobat 7 or Reader 7 as a target version so in form properties if you go to defaults and you want to choose your target version you can no longer choose seven they're limiting you to eight or above and that would make sense uh, because the technology is changing the uh, XFA object is changing and they have to eventually leave some things behind and so right now the XFA object that's being used is 3.3 .3, and so the older versions of reader will not be able to read things produced in lifecycle ES3 unless you um, unless you roll back to another version of, of lifecycle and create it there but besides these 
It's a great product. I think it is worth the $299 if you are a heavy lifecycle developer or if you're a corporate uh, employee and your 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 uh, company is willing to pay for it. It is worth upgrading because there is some healthy, good features that make the price uh, worth your time. Anyway, I hope this helps. Uh, I'm very impressed with the new version of Lifecycle, and I think uh, it's worth the upgrade, and I encourage you all to do that. And like always, I'd like you to remember that uh, True Tech Troubleshooting is here for you. We we are producing these videos to help you. And if uh, there's something that a topic that you want to know about that we haven't covered, we'd love to hear your suggestions and comments. Remember, IT problems are usually simple, but they're never easy. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.